Father, once again we say thank you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are our Father. You are our Creator. You are our Mentor. You are our Defense. You are our battle axe and the weapon of war. You are our backbone. Light the well with you. You have always been there for us. You did not let the enemy to destroy our life. Father, in this house, we say thank you. Over your church, the new life in Christ ministry, we say thank you. Over the men of valor, over the venturous women, we say thank you. Over all our children, over all the youths, the light bearer, Lord, we say thank you. My Father, my God, and my Lord, both those who are here on ground and online, and the people that went to work that cannot come today, we say thank you. For your word that we enable us to hear this morning, Father, we say thank you. My Father, my God, and my Lord, as we are going to your word, Father, open our hearts, open our understanding, Lord, to understand your word. Establish your word in our hearts. Don't allow the blood of the devil to take it away. My Father, my God, both the speaker and the hearer, today the one that we are going to speak and hear, don't let it be against us at the end of our day. My Father, my Lord, let the word be fruitful in our life. Through your word, my Father, my God, and my Lord, let there be breakthrough. Through your word today, let there be healing. Lord, through your word, let there be testimony. Lord, through your word, set our captive free. Lord, through your word, take away anxiety and give us peace. My Father, through your word, comfort us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Satan, you have no part in this meeting today. By so doing, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. We rebook, we renounce, we revoke your agenda in this house in the name of Jesus. Father, release your Holy Spirit and let the heaven open. Father, for the rest of today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be the holy name. For in Jesus' wonderful, mighty name, we have prayed. If you are a child of God, shout a loudest hallelujah. Maybe you don't hear what I'm saying. If you are truly child of God and you know that heaven is your priority, shout a loudest hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before you will see that, the Lord has added to the church. Through the house of Sister Buki and Brani Yogubule, a bouncing baby girl on, sun, on Friday. Meaning on Friday there's going to be naming ceremony. But they, they haven't tell us either in the church or in their house. But all what we know is a baby girl have joined us. Shout a better hallelujah. Uh, put your hands together and let me sit in the presence of God. Bring out your pen and your jota. Last week, we started a series which we tied to examine yourself and amend your ways. Examine yourself and amend your ways. We are taking the reading from the book of Jeremiah today, 7, 1 to 8. Jeremiah 7, verse 1 to 8. Examine yourself and amend your way. 
the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of the new life in Christ ministry who enter in and are at this gate to worship the Lord, to worship the Lord. Thou say the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Let's go read it together with me. Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Amend your ways and your doing. I will cause men to serve you. Brethren, anyway, let's, let's finish it. Let's finish it. Verse 4. Do not trust in this lying word, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are this. For if you truly amend your ways and your doing, if you truly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other God to your heart. Then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot, that cannot talk to me, that cannot, that cannot. Now give me verse 3. Let me start my message this morning with verse 3. The word of God says, Thou said the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Here the Bible does not tell us to fast. It did not tell us to pray. It did not tell us to do vigil. It did not tell us to bring salt. It did not tell us to bring water. Brethren, I'm always saying it. Our God is a, a God of principle. It's a simple God. Not until when you begin to fast for seven days, 20 days, 21, 100 days, that your neck is tiny, that God will answer your prayer. Don't misquote me. I didn't say you should not fast. I'm a man of fasting. I'm a man of what? I haven't break my fast since three days now. So I'm a man of fasting. I didn't, I didn't encourage not to fast. But when you are fasting and you know that your way is not right before your maker, how can your prayer be answered? That's what I'm saying. God's principle is very simple. He has standard. God has protocol. The standard or let's say protocol in this place is if you amend your ways and your doing, I will cause you to dwell in this place safely. Men will serve you. Blessing will pursue you. Money will overtake you. Money will be your messenger. That's what I'm saying. Many of us, our way before God is not right. And we are crying, crying, crying. He did not answer. And we are knock, knock, knock. The door is not open. Why? Because our way is not right before him. I said something to us last week here that in your house, you are another person. In the house of God, you are another person. At your workplace, you are another person. No. It's not supposed to be so. God is everywhere. God sees you either in the corner, in your house, outside, in the house of God. God sees you. Are you listening to me? We are talking of this year, 2024, that God has promised us that we visit us, but he's now telling us to amend our way, 
He's telling us, amend your ways. Amend your ways and your doing. Then I will cause you to dwell in this place in peace. Are you listening to me? Now, before I will go further, I'm still coming back here. Give me the book of, uh, the book of Luke. The book of Luke, I think 19. Luke, the book of Luke 19 about Sychios. I want to show you something. The man that amend his way, what happened to him? We know that the Bible says he ran into the tree of Camel to know the type of Jesus, the, the type of person Jesus is. And when Jesus came there, he asked him to come down. And Jesus says you come down immediately. He came down and he did something. Give me from verse 5. Let's look at how this man amended his way and is doing. And let's see the response from his maker. This man is his is tax collector taking things by force. Things that is not belongs to him. He is a sinner. He doesn't go to church. He commits adultery. He fornicates. But he ran to a tree. He knew that Jesus is going to pass through this road. But there are a lot of Christians, Pharisees, Sadducees, described. Calling themselves a righteous man. They are following Jesus, but they did not amend their way. They did not amend their doing. They did not examine themselves. Are you listening to me this morning? Look at what happened. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Sychios, make haste and come down. For today, I must stay in your house. Jesus did not say today salvation have come to your house. No salvation yet. Jesus said, I'm visiting you. There is no salvation. There is no deliverance. There is no healing. Jesus did not pronounce good, prof, uh, 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 positive into his life. When Jesus say, what, what Jesus say is, I must enter into your house today. But this man examined himself and amend this way. Then a word of peace and settlement came from the Almighty. That is what Jesus is, is expecting us to do. What happened is, I must enter into your house today. But, but when they saw it, you have jumped it, give me six, please. So, he made us and come down and received him in sadness. Talk to me. He received him. Now, did you receive Jesus joyfully? Did you receive him, oh hearts? Did you receive him into your house or partial? Do you tell him to come into your life as your savior, as your God, as your, as your Jesus and your personal savior? That's what we are saying. Let's look at what is transpired here. And so he made this and came down and received him, number one, joyfully. Now go to verse 7. And the Bible says, but when they saw it, they all complained. Why people are complaining? When you are making your decision, let them complain. When you are making your decision, let them talk. It's between you and your maker. When they say you are going on Wednesday, you are going on Friday, you are going on Sunday, let them say. People will complain. Either you do good or... Don't allow them to make you to mix heaven. What are you going to do there? Is that their business? You know what you are looking for. You know where you are going. Praise God. Let me tell you, 
I told you to, you know, it's me and uh, Pastor Mike in this house. I see it that the people that had, had, had advice in a godly way that did not take my advice, they are now coming back to me. And it is too late. Pastor Mike, you are here yesterday. And it is too late. And I said something to him, three parable. I said, number one, whomever you meet in the village is your master. And it's about Balaba is your master because you met him there. Isn't it? Brian is laughing. Amen. I said, number two, the person that you will run after, that you have gone far, and you know that you are going to wait for him, you better don't run after, after her, him. Do you understand? Now, if I'm going to wait for you, and I met you on the way, and I ran faster ahead of you, and I'm still waiting for you because you know the road, why are you running, why are you running faster than him? And it's here in your madrode in Iwaju, in your king Kojai. That means the person, oh, let go because of your Madonna. The person you are going to wait for, that know the way, that know the road, is better you begin to follow his full step. Don't go after, don't run after him or her. I told him yesterday. What I'm saying, examine yourself. Amend your way. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. That is why I tell you, not what people are saying about you that is matter. You know yourself. Let them call you a sinner. Let them call you whatever. Let them call you a procreate. When you know that before your maker, you are not an hypocrite. God said to Moses, he said, I know you by your name. Did God know you by your name? What is the name that God is calling you? What is the, the plan of God upon your life? What is it that God has for you in, 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 in stocks? Don't let anybody take it away. Everybody know himself. Praise God. Then Sarkio stood and said to the Lord, he examined himself and he amended. Talk to me. This is my wife, isn't it? Huh? I can't know her more than herself. We are sleeping together, we are working together, we are saying my lover, my coconut water, my bread in the sugar. But yet, I can't know her more than I said. Huh? Am I speaking, sir? And she can't know me more than myself. I may say he's pastor. The man is righteous, he's righteous. He preached the word of God. Uh, she can't know me more than are you listening to me now this man uh, uh, examined himself and immediately amend his way when he met his maker he said look lord i gave half of my goods to the poor and if i have taken anything from anyone by false accusation I restore fourfold. He amend. He do what? He examine that I'm a thief. He examine that I'm a low amount should be. He amend that I'm once politician eating Nigerian money. He amend. He realize. Are you listening to me? And what next? And Jesus said to him, 
If you can do it right now, this is your word. When Jesus first met him, what did he say? Talk to me. Huh? I can't hear you. I will enter into your house. The house that Jesus wants to enter, the carpet there, isn't it? The coaching chair is from arm robber, isn't it? But Jesus knew. Am I speaking? The air condition that we blow to Jesus is false money. Isn't it? But why Jesus entered into that house? They are still on the road going. And Jesus said, I am entering to your house. Now, when he said, and Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house. Why? Jesus has sanctified the house before he entered. Whatever thing that is there is under the grace. Mercy of counsel it. Because he examined himself and he amended his way. Am I speaking? For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I told you in the book of Ezekiel 33 verse 11 that God is not happy for our soul to perish. It's not his, his, his will for Satan to inherit us. Are you listening to me? Amend your way. Examine yourself. Things will be okay. Things will go the way it's supposed to go. Before you call him, he will say, here I am. Isaiah 58 verse 9, can you give it to me quickly? Quickly. Isaiah 58 verse 9. Let's go. Then you shall what? Uh-huh. And we answer. But he said, leave this one. But he said to you and I, in the book of Isaiah 1, that when you make a many prayer, I will not hear. Why? He said, your, your hand is full of blood. You are not yet examining yourself. You did not amend your way. But here, he said, once you have done it, give me verse 8. Before he said, we call me and I will answer. Give me verse 8. There your light, give me verse 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hunger and take your, and, and, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that will cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Yes? Then your light shall be break forth like morning and your healing shall spring forth spreadly and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Yes? Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. He says something there. Yes? If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of finger and speaking wickedness, it is by then it will answer you. So when you did examine yourself and you are fasting and you are praying and you are studying, God is not a wicked God. In every process of God, there is condition. God is ready to answer your prayer. God is ready to bring it to pass. God is ready to, 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 to remove reproach, embarrassment from you. God is ready to deal with your enemy. If you can meet up to the this, to this standard, to the condition of God. Am I speaking? Let's go back to Jeremiah 7 now. Jeremiah 7. No, we are in six. That is why all the media is supposed to be coming to Bible study and study. 
when the message is going on, when I say I'm coming back, you will note that down, that this is where we are coming back to. That's a good media. If you do not oppress the stranger, no, three, 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 sorry, three. Go to verse three. Seven, 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 three, seven, three. The word that, seven, three. Thou said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I mind your ways and your doing, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Yes, verse four. Do not trust in, the, in this line, word say the temple of the lord the temple of the lord the temple of the lord are this verse 5 now he warns us again he say for if you truly without no one force you if you truly brethren don't allow anyone to force you for your salvation the bible make me to understand the book of Philip. don't go there leave this one that everyone will work out his own I can't work it for my wife my wife can't work it for me everybody you're on your own we are talking of amending we are talking of examining I can call you my we didn't see you in the church my sir I didn't see you in the church hope nothing but I can't force you to come to the church because I'm not going to force you to enter into the grave. And I'm not going to force you to stand at the, at the, at the seat of judgment at the end. But the only one that I can do for you is what I'm saying. And I will not be the part, I will not be, be part of the people who says, do what I say, don't do what I'm doing. Whatever I say, I practice it. Amen. For if you truly amend your ways and your doings, if you truly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, verse 6, verse 7, then I will cause you, that is my condition, this is what I will do for you. Examine, examine yourself, amend your way, I will say to you, Examine yourself. I meant your way. I will say to you. I told you of a man who came here. He's still our member. I won't mention his name. I think I told the the men on 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 on, on Friday when God said all the men of this church they are struggling. They should do business with him. The man came here. He's not our member. Listen to me. On Wednesday program, and the power of God came. Then I called the man out. I said the Lord said. You owe him. The first time the man will come here. I say, sir, the Lord said I should tell you you owe him. And I didn't know that the man is going through tough. Number one, the home office sees his uh, passport. The wife is trusting God for the fruit of the womb. But God said I should tell him. I say, sir, God said I should tell you that you owe him. And the door you are knocking, it will not be open because it's the hand of God. Then I began to repeat, repeat. Then the Lord said, ask him. I said, sir, the Lord asked me to ask you, what did you do, oh God? Are you listening to me? He said, I didn't pay my tithes. And the Lord has warned me. And I said, go and settle God and let God settle you. Then I, call, I said, where is your wife? He brought out his wife. I said, you better need than and beg your husband. I said, are you trusting God for the fruit of the womb? He said, yes. I said, this is the man that hinder you. How many of us are here by then? You are here. Thank you. God bless you. Then it's not to remember. That's the first time of coming here. But let me tell you, the Bible says he sent his word for those who hear and listen and obey and he healed them. He set them free. The man came on Sunday, the following Sunday, with his envelope in the hand. And he said, Daddy, this is my tithe. He's not a member. He just decided to join this church because of the breakthrough. Then as I hold the envelope to pray, God said, don't pray. Tell him it's not complete. How many of us are here on that Sunday? I said, sir, the Lord said it's not complete. Your tithe is not complete. He was looking at me. I said, okay, let me bail you out. The Bible description, there is a scripture. If you hold God, maybe you didn't pay last month, you want to pay this month. God said, I will take interest. 
Yes or no? 20%. If you're supposed to pay 300 pounds last month, you say because of issue of life, you don't pay. When you are bringing that 300 pounds in this month, you add 20%. That is God. Go and study the word. So, now, I told the man, I said, the one you owe, I don't know the year, I didn't know the month. If you are now paying every month, be topping it. Be topping it. And the Lord said, because I've told him, I should pray for him. I pray. I said, this week, you will see the hand of God. Simple prayer. That week, the home office called him and released his passport. The following month, the wife pregnant. Sometimes God is dealing with you. You would think it's a winch. They are still our member. They are still our, they are still our member. I think they have two or three children now. Nothing happened to the woman. It's God that closed the womb himself. How many of you that know that nothing happened to Rachel's womb? Go and, go and read it. Anna, nothing happened to his womb. The Bible says, and God closed her womb. And God shut the womb because of Lehi. That is why I said, if God wants to settle your case, he will find one of your enemy, he will destroy them and use it to settle you. Don't be God enemy. Are you listening to me? That is how the man gets settled. Not prayer, not fasting, not oil, not water. Obedience to his word. Amend your way. Examine yourself. Where have you wronged it? Why are we praying? The prayer is not answered. Everybody know himself. Then I will cause you to dwell in this house, in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and never. Forever and never. Now my question because of my time, now you may say, how can I, how can I examine myself? It is very simple. Why? Because I said it, you know yourself more than anybody. How? In Luke 15, verse 17. Luke 15 and verse 17. Luke 15 and verse 17. The Bible makes me to understand that the prodigal son, he came to himself. That is how you can examine yourself. Am I fulfilling destiny? Am I moving forward? Am I still in the, the same place I was five years ago, seven years ago, ten years ago? Amen. Do you wait, do you wait patiently for the promise of God or you are in a hurry? Are you thinking of your age? Do you know the time that God wants to say to you that you are in a hurry? Moses will call at the age of 80 and he fulfilled destiny for 120. Age is what? Age is what? You don't know the time he will answer you. Don't be in a hurry. All what you need to do, examine yourself. Am I still on the track? Am I still with God? If Jesus come today, am I going with him? Examine. M-O-T. The world is turned upside down, brethren. Sister Bosse asked a question last, is it last Wednesday, a week before? He said, how are we going to know the true church? How are we going to know the true men of God? The whole world is confused. But the Bible makes me to understand we should tell all, we should test all the spirits to know which of it from God. Very simple if you want to examine your way, 
Luke 15, 17. And the Bible says, but when he came to himself, he came from rich, from, 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 from rich house, he took all his inheritance and went his way. But when he lavished everything, one day, when the people that say babao, babao, they are no more there. The ladies that he's carrying about, they don't see him again. The bodyguard, they are just waving on him. He went to the camp of shrine to eat together with the shrine. But one day, he sat down. He bowed his head and he came to himself. Why can't you come to yourself? Why can't you amend your way before God? Why can't you raise up your hand and let, let him carry you? Why can't you say, Daddy, I can't do it alone? Why can't you surrender and say to him, you know the way? Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servant have bread enough and to fear, and I perish with hunger? God have everything that we need. Amen. One of our brothers is here now. He will be hearing me if I'm lying. They are walking. He's a hard-working man, and God has a plan in his life, together with his wife. But when they do it, do it, do it, do it, to the extent the governor, who governed their state that year, duped them. Governor. The little one in their hand, governor did not need it. But God used the governor as a devourer. They trust in the governor. And they sent to. So later they came to me. The first thing I asked them, I said, are you paying your tithe? They said, no, sir. I said, God said, go and start to pay your tithe. Anything that they do here, they send it down. And they dupe them. Problem. Every month, every year. They are here. So when I cancel them, I pray for them. I say, go and amend your way. Examine yourself before God. Sir. When they begin to do it, they have more than enough now. What they did not qualify for, God gave it to them. Even though a cast of land in Ikorodu, the man that don't know them, just their number, he called. Do you have so, 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 so interest in this land? He said, yes, but I didn't know, I didn't have money. But the prophecy have come. He came to me, I said, go, run for it. The man paid for them before they arrived. He's still there. The man is here. He's listening to me. Amen. I will arise and go to my father. Is That is God. Let us come to him. You cannot be more than your God. You cannot be more than your maker. Some people, they are making nyanga, nyanga for nothing. It reminds me when we were in Germany. The, our boys by then, when we gathered, they begin to say, oh, I just sent six cars home now. One Mercedes-Benz, mess, uh, mess 280. Then the people are begin to say, hey. One day, they get the boy arrested. They put him in prison together with some colleagues and he was crying in prison. I'm telling you the truth. So, and they are asking him, oh boy, why are you crying? Your own is better now. House, you don't fool. Only my brother, I don't have anything in Nigeria. <laughs> why are you doing young guy? Why are you raising shoulder? Why do you want to frustrate people? What you don't have, you are saying you have it. And you too, why are you listening to them? Huh? Why are you listening to them? Praise God. Am I speaking this morning? Because the house is cool. 
Okay, after this message, I will preach the message that will make us to be. Say, oh, pastor, right down. Do we want that? I could begin to blow vocabulary. What is not real, I will be telling you that is real. Amen. Then to be jump on, we will go blow whistle. Oh, pastor, right down. Yes. No, that is not what we want. I want your destiny to speak. I want your future to better. And the one who can make your destiny to speak is the one telling you, examine yourself and make your way and make your doing. I will cause men to serve you. I will make you to dwell peacefully in the land. Nobody will harass you. Nobody will beat you. No witches or wizard that will disturb your destiny. Your money when you are receiving, the voter will not enter. That is what I'm saying. I will arise and go to my father, and I will, I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am not longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. What happened? Let's go. And he arose, he came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That is God. Is waiting for you. What happened? Let's go. And the son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. What happened? But the father said to his servant, Bring to cover his nakedness. To cover his shame. He don't want the son to come back home naked. God don't want anybody, your enemy, to see you naked. God is always there to take away your reproach. But examine yourself. Amend your way. Amend your doing. Bring out the best rope and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sander on his feet. Yes, you have wasted what God has given to you, but he can do it again. He has it in his kingdom. He has his spare part. He has it. He has it. He can take care of you. He can renew your, he can renew your system. He can change your kidney. He can touch that liver that they said is not in order. It can make you to be fruitful at old age. Because there's a scripture who says, who says that, I will, still be, I will still be a fruit in old. Praise God. Not only that, you remember the four leopard in 2 King 7 and verse 9. 2 King 7 and verse 9. The, 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 the leper, they said, we are doing not right. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is the day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household, examine yourself and mend your ways. There is purpose of God upon your life, brethren. God is taking you to somewhere, brethren. God wants to tell the whole world that I'm your God. David said, don't allow them to say, where is my God? And the king, and the king went to, the, to, to Daniel in the dead lion, can your God, you are serving continually, rescue you? And he voice out, my God, who I'm serving continually. If you cannot prove it to your enemy, they will mess you up. They will do what? If you cannot prove it to your enemy, they will mess you up. And I decree this morning, enemy will not mess us up. I say enemy will not mess us up. In Jeremiah 26, verse 18, verse 11 to 13. Jeremiah 26, verse 11 to to 13, what did he say? And the priest and the prophet spoke to the priest 
And all the people saying, this man deserves to die, for he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the prince and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city with all the words that you have heard. Huh? Read louder. That is the judgment. Now, if you don't want to perish, God has sent a word to them. He wants to destroy them. He wants them to be perished. But Jeremiah was telling them, you know, Jeremiah, the Bible says, uh, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a prophet that cry. He weep for his people. He weep for his people. He says, now therefore, huh? please talk to me, brethren. Huh? Who is it that he's talking to? Including the preacher. Amen. I made your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God, then the Lord will relent concerning the doom that he has pronounced against you. Amen. Stand on your feet. Let me stop here. Amen. Amend your ways. The people that talk today, they will bow tomorrow. Yes or no? Talk to me. Amen. If you look at the book of Isaiah 60 and verse, verse 14, let them talk. Take away shame, reproach. Let them talk. Ma, the people that talk today, whenever they say anything negative to you, they are referring to your God. And God will not fold his hand. He will fight for you. He said, all those who, all the sons of those who afflicted, Abby, they must afflict. They must say negative things. Jesus Christ said, this is the time of the hours of darkness. But when darkness pass, the whole world glorify him. Amen. He said, the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bow to you. And all those who despise me shall fall prostrate at the sole of my feet. So if it is not happen, this scripture will not be fulfilled. In scripture in the Bible is talking to each individual. Your own is there. Before they will bow, they will despise you. The time is coming now, either we like it or not. They will say, ah, around 11, the place is full. Before, if you come to the church, it's empty chair. That is one time. Either we like it or not. Either we believe it or not. We are passing through our hour of darkness. And after the tunnel, Huh? After the tunnel. Don't you know that Satan can be telling God, Joshua, Mama, Mama, Jekero, was no church, Mama, no show. Don't allow people to come to the church. He will run to Abalis. But in order for me to run to Abalis, it's better he called me home. My aunt lost his labor by woman because Mofe Kero was no church. The crowd will come, but I will crowd myself in hell fire. Isn't it? Abisa, the crowd will come, sir. But I may say, I will crowd myself in hell fire. It will not be my portion. It's the owner of his job. Toba unko kumawa. Toba unko se wamale. What he sent us is what I'm doing. He know the time, he know the people he brings to you. Isn't it? As you see it so, Oju I am not ashamed as you're looking at the church. You see me, you can see that I'm 
Yes or no? Hmm? Yes. Yes, thank you. And the spirit is filled up. So he said, all the, all the sons of those who are afflicted, you shall come bow down to you. And all those who despise you shall prostrate at the sole of your feet. And they shall call me the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel, whereby you have been forsaken and behaved, that no one went through you. I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Put your hands together for God. He will make you a joy of many generations. Amen. Allow him. Be right with him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. A joy of many generation. But before it can happen, you need two things to do. Number one. Number two. Turn to your neighbor. Say neighbor. Do you hear it? Have you made your way? Have you examined yourself? Say neighbor. When you go to the market, don't listen to the noise of the market. Face the woman you want to buy market from. Amen. What this sister want here is not what you want. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Ben. But you don't walk on scene. You don't walk on scene. You don't walk on It's coming. You understand? Praise God. Maybe he's looking for peace. But another person is looking for trouble. <laughs> Whatever you want in the house of God, sir, is what you will get to. Yes or no? Yes. Some people, sir. <laughs> Some people, sir. They didn't come with load. But because of cho, 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 they carry load. Though. Yes or no? Amen. Amen. Some people don't have problem before they come to the house of God. But because of their evil heart, sir, and that person's load, when the angel took it from, away from them, examine your way. Examine yourself and amend. Amend. Talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, amend your way. Amen, you're doing. Examine yourself. Neighbor, look at yourself. Are you still on the track? Are you still with God? Do you obey him completely? It shall be well with us. Put your hands together. Be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Amen.